Guys, welcome to another episode of Roll with the Fox Antivirus Edition, Season 2, Episode 7. Wait, I get a day off? Yeah, you yeah. do. Nice. Wait, no, it's not off. You have to manage the tree. Yeah. You gotta Wait, this. what? No. <laughs> Switch. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm back here, guys. <laughs> Uh, welcome to, what is it, episode 37, 38, another episode. 37. <laughs> another episode. Don't even start with season two, because I'm getting confused as we speak already. So, guys, um, today we're going to work on some uh, sort of uh, middle of the range guard. Uh, what do you do if, if the guy is standing and he's not far enough that sort of you know, trying to figure out how he's gonna approach your guard, and he's not inside your guard where you can sort of start to tie him up and, uh, and attack. It's sort of that nowhere land where, uh, you know, you have a hard time tying him up, uh, and if you make a mistake, he's gonna start passing immediately. So that's a very, uh, uh, it, kind of an interesting place to be. So usually if I have a guy standing in my guard, I, I wanna make sure that, that I attack immediately. What I'm Usually from here, if he's standing, what I'm looking to do is either bring him in and start with sort of split guard. That's ideal. But a lot of times, you're not get, you know, he's, he's not giving you that. So as he's backstepping, I will just, I usually go to Della X. I, I usually either go by the knee or I go by the, by the ankle. And I, from here, I will sit up and attack Rigatano sequences. Okay, so this is what I'm aiming for when he's standing. Again, if he's standing, he's got good posture. If he's backstepping, I'm gonna go to Del X. And I'm, now I'm gonna tie him up. If, if I tie up his head, I'm gonna disengage and I'm gonna try to either get a triangle or if he's cutting the angle away from me, I'm gonna get a reverse triangle. Um, so that's, that's what, guys, you have to, when you do this, you have to be, and I'm guilty of this myself. A lot of times I just get lazy. I just, you know, lay around and wait, you know, like when Enrique, you know, hit up playing. And now it's sort of, now it starts to bite me in the ass. Now I can no longer be lazy. I have to really weave and, but now I'm, oh, what do we got here? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to try to sit up. Don't be lazy, sit up and start to attack. All right, so again, when he's standing here, this is what I'm looking for. Foot on the hip, if I can bring him in. I can't, right now, I'm not gonna get the split guard because Enrique's hand is too low. So if he was up higher, if he was here, I'm gonna get split guard. But if his hands are on, on my knees or my shins, that's gonna be hard. So what I'm looking to do is weave and now start to attack. I have an Udigatami grip and it's not partially depends what he's doing. You know, I can, you know, he's, I can also go forward. So I can usually tie him up in a, in a good way for me. But as Enrique, as I start to do this, he starts to stand more square in response. Okay? So I will still try to get a good grip on at least one hand. All right? I'm going to pivot, put my foot across his belly. And cut. Now, as this is happening, some of you may think I'm vulnerable to Estima. Go ahead. Go to town. Go to town. So, the interesting part is when you're knocking somebody down in that direction, your leg is already in a position to defend the Eskimo off. You just gotta be aware of it. All right, so let's look at that again. So again, I'm trying to tie him up, trying to get something going. He starts to stand square. I'm gonna grab his heel, bring my outside leg in, and cut. Normally, I would dis disengage the leg, but I'm just keeping it just, so go ahead. I actually pass his guard that way as well. So I not only knock him down, but I also pass his guard. Usually, 
Um, it's going to be hard for him to attack the Eskimo because as he's falling, it's, it's not going to be that tight. So let's look at it without it. So I'm trying to tie something up. This is, this is where I'm going to wind up usually when I knock somebody down. I'm sort of in their half guard, but it's, it's, this is a pretty dominant half guard. I can, I can do a lot of things to Enrique from here. I can guillotine him. I can uh, um, switch into an anaconda if he comes up. Or if he comes up, I just need to adjust. And he's done. And I have it. <laughs> <laughs> So I've actually used this, it's a very simple, I think it's called single sweep. Yes. Guys, um, yeah, that brings me to something. I'm very bad with names. I hate um, uh, uh, sort of, uh, well, I don't hate it. But, but guys, when you refer to a technique, uh, I have a hard enough time remembering, remembering English names, let alone Japanese names of, of techniques. Uh, especially if, if it's something, you know, of course everybody knows Kimura, uh, you know, but other than that, uh, there's also tribes that refer to, to, to things in Japanese terms. Uh, it, some guys refer to it, so you know, scorpion, you have lockdown, scorpion, electric chair. Okay, I, I know that one, but if you refer to a position by a name that your tribe uses. Try to be more descriptive, so that way I, I kind of can visualize or picture what your question means. Um, all right, because like I said, I have a hard time remembering them. And literally you have one technique, one specific submission, one specific thing that can be referred to by four or five different names. Um, so I believe this is called a sickle sweep, uh, which actually makes sense, which is descriptive. So, you know, triangle again, that's pretty descriptive. <laughs> you know, I, I know Kesagatame and Urekatame and stuff, but other than that, that's, that's pretty much the extent of my Japanese uh, nomenclature for, for, these, for, these, uh, for these techniques. So, uh, uh, if, guys, if you have a question and, and I don't know what it is and I can't figure it out, I'll ask you to just maybe uh, send me a short clip if, if, if you can demonstrate it. If, you know, pick something up from YouTube that sort of demonstrates what you're asking about. Anyways, do we have any questions on this? Uh, we have, uh, have check-ins. We have check-ins from India, Utah, Tokyo, Japan, nice. New Jersey. We also have uh, Thurston Picker says, hello, Carl from, greets from Kiel. Nice. We have Czech Republic. We have Holland, Russia. Vernon, Colombia, Warren, uh, Warrington, California, Taiwan, Sweden, Georgia, New Zealand, all around the world. Yeah. Is Sasha <laughs> off on? It would be in Cyrillic alphabet. Sasha, if you're on, there is Google Translate. Sometimes I can translate things into Russian. That'll help with the questions. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, I asked Valerie. <laughs> And Jared uh, Moglia on uh, YouTube says, I just watched your spider guard video. Do you ever place the foot on the bicep in Nogi? Uh, no. I try not to put it on bicep. I try to. So Nogi, I, I still place in the same spot. If, if it's on the bicep, it's, it's way too easy to cut. So it's, it's, I want the blade of my foot. I have done this. I will do it because I know as he's, as he's swimming in, I'm trying to get something something else going. So I know I know which way he's gonna move. It's, it's a very predictable response. So even Nogi, like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this one. <laughs> I know which way he's gonna move. So I know exactly which way he's gonna move. I know if I do a Nogi spider guard, it, it's literally I have a second max to have that grip and, and use it. You're not gonna use it to keep the guy there, you're gonna use it because you know if, if, you, if you put your foot, blade of your foot goes in the elbow, you know this is how he's gonna swim. So you know how he's gonna move for the next split second. And there's some value in that. 
Acoustic Jaybird uh, says, hashtag Fox Goes Global. <laughs> and apparently, I, I forget who, from Serbia, I think he's volunteered, um, volunteered to, uh, to move to Antarctica so he can literally cover the seventh continent too. <laughs> Say hello to the penguins. And we also have uh, checkers from Canada, Israel, and Australia. And Jared followed up with, can you elaborate on the Deep Della X? I haven't seen much on it, but I know it's good for lanky grapplers. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, by the way, shout out to Piotr, who is answering my questions, not just answering them, but also pointing people to the correct episode and exact time frame in that episode. So thank you, Piotr. Nice. Yeah, he gets a star today. <laughs> Student of the month. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Jenny gave him a good, good, good run for the money too. So, uh, wait, what's the question? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> if you could go over uh, Della X. Uh, yeah, uh, there is some other stuff on this uh, that I've done. Uh, and uh, it's basically a, a hybrid. So, uh, I'm not. You know, uh, instead of sort of swimming into Ashigarami and going to X guard, what I do is, is position my Della Hiva hook, switch to the other side, which, which I need. If I was going to attack Enrique's back, this is what I would do, okay? So I, I would need to transition it there anyway, so I transition it to the hip to the other side. And now, Enrique can take this away from me very easily. All right, back step. So, especially if he controls this, my, my right leg. So, to prevent it from doing that, I immediately swim behind his knee. If he drops to his knees, I will use my right foot to feed his left ankle to my left hand. All right, and now from here, um, it depends how he's reacting, so there's a lot of possible reaction. The one thing I gotta make sure I stop him from is driving his knee deep. But right now, it's, it's, it's not, yeah, there's not a whole lot he, he can do. So he cannot attack this leg unless my foot comes out. But a lot of times what I'll do is we'll, we'll yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Rika tries to kick it out here. Yeah, take it out. So what, what I'm gonna try to do is control him and try to start to take his back. All right, so let's look at it from a, a different angle from here. So it's a bit of a hybrid. Uh, like I said, I you know, if I start to play as he's taking this away from me, so to avoid that, if, if that were to happen, I'm gonna basically try to reach and start to start to attack his back. But I don't want to get into that scramble. So when I get this, I immediately weave in. So it's a bit of like a, a hybrid. Now if he drops, I will use my right foot to feed his left leg, his left ankle to my left hand. Now I'm gonna to try to sit up. And from here, um, since Enrique grabbed my head, I would probably tag put in Tommy, but now I will un unravel to start to get my feet on the hips. So I use that a lot when, when the guy is thinking about a knee cut through the middle or back step. So if I think, when I have somebody in my guard and he's thinking about, I, I sort of, you can, you can anticipate you know, how, they're, how they're standing, what kind of pass they're gonna use. So if I think the guy's gonna try to use a knee cut or back step, that's what I'll go to a lot. On Instagram, Ralph Photos 23 says, Raphael from Sarah BJJ Levittown, thanks for all you've done during this quarantine. Thank you, appreciate it. I appreciate you guys um, tuning in and asking a lot of good questions. So let's look at what happens. So again, I'm, I'm aiming for the Della X, but it's, it, when it doesn't happen, he stands too square, I knock him down. Now, as he's going down, one of two things is going to happen. Yeah, go ahead. You can, you can do that. So if he goes for del, uh, for Estima Lock, guys, I'll stay on my side. Go ahead. 
I'm gonna go ahead. So if he stays on it, guys, you can defend it fairly easily. All right, and actually wind up not just sweeping it, but also passing his guard. So it's actually it, it's it's a good thing for you to. Uh, I usually will place my foot in the middle, and I will go under his head, under his arm, I mean under his leg, and start to drop. Yeah, this is not gonna be good for you. <laughs> he should have stretched. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> you did. Uh, there's some possibility that my left foot, so as I'm doing this, slips to the other side. If that happens, guys, I'm actually going to continue to move forward, and I'm going to step over that leg. But now I also got the guard pass. And Enrique gets, I got a guard pass. He, he gets baseball bat choked. Do we have any questions on that? Let's see. We have a few people watching from the academy. We have uh, Bobby Kletcher. We have Nicole. Up, we guys? have Gabby, we have Deep, we have Rick, uh, Ricky, Cosmo, Ty, What's up, guys? Felix Rosario, and uh, let's see, as far as questions. Now I'm starting to wonder if I would have done a better job reading <laughs> the tree of devices. <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous Jiu-Jitsu asks, Coach, my question is, uh, how do you escape an inverted triangle from the back? <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> All right, let's, let's give it a shot that we resume back to where we were. I assume this is what you mean. waiting for confirmation all right so let's run with this for now it's on your sotillo says <laughs> by tapping <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a possibility <laughs> guys when you ask questions like if you're really deep into something this is a problem my biggest problem is not the choke right now my biggest problem is my arm because that's instantaneous so if enrique could sit up and 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 put his arm under under his armpit this is this is pretty much instantaneous well, it's choke, I have time. If you've been watching the episodes, you know it may not be a lot of time, but I do have time. They so confirmed that this is it. Yeah, yes. so what I'm looking to do is, is protect my right hand, or right arm, rather. So I want to make sure that it doesn't get, get taken right away. I need to unravel his legs, all right? If you don't unravel his legs, he's done. So I'm looking to basically unravel his legs. Now, this is not ideal, but it's enough. So, once I unraveled the legs a little bit, now I'm, I'm gonna judge. I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm thinking left or right. So I may go to, to my uh, uh, left, realizing that Enrique's countering that side, and I go the other way. Guys, this is very important. When you're in trouble, is to think about escapes in two different directions. They, uh, Anala Sujitsu followed up with, uh, and they're hiding the leg behind your back. Well, he was. And you're about to pass out. Let's add an, another complication to that. <laughs> you're about to pass out. This time, I'm thinking going right, and I know he starts to count. He didn't count it properly. <laughs> I switched it to you. Is that the 
good one. <laughs> All right, so again, you know, if you get in that position, if you can escape three out of 10 times, that's a pretty good record. Understand that you're pretty much screwed at that position. Positionally, and you're this close to being submitted. So guys, although sometimes there are miracles in jiu-jitsu, they're not frequent. So when you caught, you caught. Of course, try to escape, but also understand that when you're so deep into a positional dominance by him, and this close to submission, don't expect like, okay, here's a magic trait that's gonna let you escape 100% of the time. And the check-in from Russia, I'm sorry, I can't make out the name. Sasha? I, I can't I can't make out that day. <laughs> it says, um, are you ever planning to give a seminar somewhere in Europe after the coronavirus situation? I would love to participate. Uh, yes, for sure. Uh, guys, I pretty much every year I give a series of seminars. Uh, this year is going to be different, depends on, uh, on the situation, but generally speaking, I've given a series of seminars in Italy. Uh, I've given series of seminars in Germany. I've given uh, camps in Czech. We had plans for Bulgaria this year, but I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. That would be in July, end of July, but we'll see if that happens. Um, and uh, I also will, have, will have, you know, we'll do individual seminars in France, in, in uh, Austria, in uh, Holland, uh, and a few other countries. So yes, the answer is yes. As everything will be on Facebook, guys. I'm gonna ask Mike if he can share maybe on, on uh, Instagram, uh, but everything will be on Facebook once things settle down to a point where people can generally freely travel, because it's not just my travel, you know, I, uh, if I get there, but also people, uh, people traveling to, to get there. Now he confirmed it as Sasha, he says thank you. Nice. And uh, before this question, Alas Apir asked if you could show the sweep from the Della X again. Did I sweep you? I thought I submitted you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure which, uh, which sweep. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend, and you should have stretched. <laughs> and for the other question, also Anala Jiu Jitsu says, come to India someday. Uh, yes, I would love to do that once things settle down. Um, yeah, guys, I've been asked to do seminars in, in, in Australia, in uh, South Africa and in India and in, in, uh, in, in, I do a lot in Europe. Uh, it's easier easier to travel for me. I, I got the eight hour flight down, no problem. I can literally get off the plane, have four espressos and go teach a seminar. <laughs> but, <laughs> so as soon as the situation calms down and people can travel, I will get back on the road. Um, and Tamim uh, Popo on YouTube says, hi coach from Texas. Can you show your favorite pressure pass after the sickle sweep? Oh yeah. <laughs> you should have stretched. <laughs> so, as I knock it down, I usually, if, depends, if, if, if my foot slips, I have no choice, I have to go forward. But if my foot doesn't slip, I'm gonna go under his, under his knee Okay, I'm gonna sit up, and now this is the, somebody have mercy on that weekend. <laughs> Don't push me away, I won't, I, <laughs> he wants me to pass. This is my favorite pressure pass. I don't know if you can see Enrique's face, but I believe it's in a lot of pain. <laughs> you can tap any time you want, Enrique. Are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, do I need to repeat that? You asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> we may have a bounce on a few people here. <laughs> Not me, Enrique. 
Does that answer your question? It's, it's the outside knee is a basically a staple pass. All right, let's get back on track, guys. All right, so in response to this, uh, a lot of times people now start to stand very narrow. Okay? And, and this actually, if, if you have a, if you're in a leg locker, only five minutes, uh, if you have a leg locker, a lot of you guys that are passing your guard will, will start to stand narrow. The reason is it's much more difficult to enter the legs. What I'll usually do is I'll kick my legs out and round. From here, I'm looking for one of two things. Knock it back. Guys, if you knock it back, go one side. All right? <laughs> you should have scratched. <laughs> so that's, uh, you can go either way. Whichever he gives you, you may have to rock him back and forth. But whichever way he gives you, that's the way I go. If I want him, so... Again, he starts to stare, stare narrow, square up. So first thing when I do is, I'm always, you know, when I'm in my guard, open guard, I'm usually on one cheek. And when I'm talking about this, this cheek. I'll try to square up and lock. I go right around his knees, okay? Now, he can go forward. Let's stay with the back. He's leaning back, just knock it back. Let him ride you up, guys. Stay, stay locked. You, don't, you cannot, if you try to get up like this, you're going to get leg locked. Okay? There is no leg lock. Right now, there's no leg lock. So what I'm going to try to do is pick a side. He picked it for me. Now I will unlock. What, I have, what do I have in store for Enrique? to get guillotine variation, but it doesn't matter. You can have a lot of other fits. Okay? So this, so he stands narrow. I push him forward, he leans back, knock him back. Always stay wedged. Make sure you do not disconnect until you can pressure his hips. Once I can pressure his hips, I know what you got in <laughs> store for me. Let's see how it plays out. <laughs> Uh, normally, we would disengage, but we're, we're, <laughs> no. <since> we, <laughs> we keep going to submission. Oh, two minutes. All right, so let's check it. Hurry up. <laughs> so sometimes, as he's going on, he's not. He's going forward. So if he, if he tries to keep kind of stay low, you can always pop him up, okay? Or a lot of times you push him forward and he opens up. When he opens up like this, guys, I'm already taking All right? So again, it's one of two directions. He's either gonna go back or forward. So if he's going back, you go with it. Keep your legs clamped. Do not open them until you control his hips. If you go forward, push him forward. So what I'll do is push him, and now it's done. All right. Might be running out of time. Do we have any quick questions on this? On YouTube? Legacy Channel asked, side question, Mr. Fox, who do you enjoy watching for philosophy and technique, if anyone? Um, guys, for, for technique, I, for me, I, I, I have a short attention span. Like, literally, my students know that I'm sure they're all laughing. It's like, I'll, I'll be explaining something, and then there's a fly or something goes by, and I'm like, oh, who am I, what am I doing here? So, for, for that, I usually watch matches. I watch matches 
of people that have similar style of game that I'm trying to have or I, I already have. It's people that are usually pretty aggressive submission hunters. I, I like Hodger Gracie, I like Braulio Estima, I like his brother Victor Estima, uh, Penado Canudo now, nowadays, I like to watch him. If he's, if he's on, he's not half asleep, you know, playing with his food. Uh, who else? Um, so th those are some of the names, obviously, you know, Gary Tonin, like I love his game and you know, I have a very similar game, I think. It's like I'm constantly hunting for submission and, and if, 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 if nothing is happening, I'm willing to put myself at risk to get something going. Uh, so those are the matches I like to watch and I try to see if, I, if there's anything that I could do slightly differently or pick up some pieces of, of sort of, of what they do or how they approach a specific position or specific sequence. So that's sort of the best, best thing. As far as philosophy, um, I, you know, I, I, I have a, I love super technical jiu-jitsu. I'm, I'm a big believer in techniques. That is one of the things that you can continue to improve forever. All right, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this, guys. I want you to sort of at least think about it. Maybe you not, might not be able to do some of this stuff, but at least think about it. Maybe when things open up and you can train, is go back to episode whatever and, and say, okay, I wanna, I wanna play with this. Um, but there's more to jujitsu than just, just uh, technical aspects. I think as teachers of, of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, we have a responsibility to our students and to sort of the, the, the population at large to you know, not necessarily uh, you know uh, be a saint, but but be be a be a role model. Try to help people that you know uh, that may need help or maybe you know in, in a rough spot. I, I think I really look up to my teacher Henzo Racy because I think he embodies not obviously not just the technical aspects of jujitsu. You know, he's won ADCC two times. He's fought anybody, guys. He's always fought. He, they don't, he didn't, doesn't care, it was 200 pounds, he was, he was a lightweight, you know, yeah, I'll fight him, no problem. But also, you know, you, that's a guy that'll give you a shirt off his back, don't piss him off, but, if you, but, but he'll give you a shirt off his back, and I've seen that multiple times, and I think that's an aspect of jiu-jitsu a lot of people miss. You know, they think of it as a sport, I'm a coach, I'm gonna give you a scientific approach, this is how science works, and goodbye. And not everybody wants that, but also, you know, when you, you know, you, you, you develop a school, and the, one of the things I love about the atmosphere of my school is the fact that when people, somebody comes in from, from out of town, and, and they're, you know, I, I, I want to call them ruthless brute or something, guy that just wants to come in and beat up on people. And they go, you know, I've had this happen to me where guys, you know, they're a certain level, but they will not roll with anybody their level or above. They will only go lower and lower, and what they do is they start to beat them up. Usually it's, it becomes like a hive. You could like literally, everybody gets agitated, including myself. I don't say anything, I'm standing there like over them to see, make sure that it doesn't go completely awry. But if, if uh, it's, it's, guys, it's funny, I could literally sell tickets who wants to go with this guy next. And that's, that's sort of just the tribe, the school, you know, coming to the aid of its, of its weaker members. Eventually those weaker members will be the stronger members and they're gonna do the same. So again, I encourage you to just look at jiu-jitsu, and we've had that debate before whether it's an art or sport. I believe it's an art. You know, everybody gets to create their own impression of what they think jiu-jitsu should be about. But don't forget about the other aspects of jiu-jitsu, not just the technical, not just the sports, not just, you know, uh, uh, sort of, I can kick somebody's ass, but therefore, no. Look, yeah, that's, that's one thing, but also look at how people treat people. And last thing, uh, Antonio Sotillo says, uh, this is amazing, I'm gonna try it on my wife. <laughs> Let us know how it works out for you. Best of luck to you. Guys, we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Roll at the Fox, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Stay well, guys, be considerate. What that means, don't drive 45 miles an hour in the fast lane. When you see an old person, <laughs> hold the door open for them. All right? Be considerate to help others. See you tomorrow.